Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing well out there after the holiday weekend. So over the weekend, uh, somebody kind of called me out on Reddit asking if I could get Invoice Ninja to run on Docker. And my first thought was, well, yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. So I've spent the last like two or three days pouring through Reddit posts and hub.docker.com and forums and Reddits and holy crap, what a mess. I have tried all kinds of different things to get Invoice Ninja up and running. And this morning I had a breakthrough. So that's what I wanna share with you today is how I got Invoice Ninja up and running in Docker on my server. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at uh, the steps that are gonna be required to get Invoice Ninja up and running. All right, so here we are on my desktop. And uh, this is the Invoice Ninja website talking about their self-hosting. And there's all kinds of different stuff going on in here. Uh, luckily, they've got this, uh, this link right up here uh, for Docker. Uh, so if we click on that, um, uh, there, there's a bunch of information in here. Of course, I, I, of course, I tried this. This is their Docker Compose file and I couldn't get it to work either. So <clears throat> I did a bunch of more searching and, and researching and looking and digging and uh, I ended up having to come up with kind of my own solution here. Uh, the first thing that I ran across that actually worked was this CDN Hammer Net uh, Invoice Ninja uh, configuration here. And originally this was just set up uh, as something that you would run, actually it's the, this whole bit right there, uh, that you would run in an SSH command and uh, it would deploy and it gets so far and uh, then you get to a point where you need a database. And for whatever reason, CDN HammerNet didn't include a database with this. So uh, because I went, wanted to go with something familiar, uh, I, uh, I just kind of took, um, do, 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 I took this from, uh, from Nextcloud and rebuilt it to use the same database that Nextcloud uses on a Next86 platform. Uh, but I tied it to uh, this Invoice Ninja uh, application. And what I came up with, uh, oops, was not that. That's some other notes from some stuff I was trying. In fact, this is one of the things I was trying that didn't work. Uh, but what I came up with uh, was over here in this stack, if we go to Invoice Ninja, uh, this guy right here. So it's a version two, version two. We've got volumes for Invoice Ninja in the database. We've got our services for the database. We're using the Maria database. Uh, the, the passwords and the username in the database, the whole bit. I just said is Ninja. Of course, you're gonna wanna change that. Um, and below that, we've got uh, the app where we're gonna use the CD HammerNet Invoice Ninja. Um, and below that, we've got some stuff that we need to change most likely. We need to change from what was the original over here. So this app key, uh, we need to generate a unique one of those. You could use this if you wanted to, but I wanna show you the right way to actually generate that uh, so that you can have your own unique uh, app key for that. Uh, you're also gonna have to change uh, this app URL to fit your uh, system for whatever your, um, uh, whatever your URL is for your home server. Uh, of course, I'm using a .local domain name. Uh, you can actually set that up in uh, Port, not in Portainer, in Open Media Vault. Um, and then the DB or the host for the database is DB. Of course, the database username and password and the database name uh, are all from up here. So if you change uh, any of these, you'll need to change these as well. Uh, the port, I just said at 889, you can change that to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, keep in mind, it can't be a, a port that's being used by another application at the same time. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, and then we've got our link to the database and restart always. So. Uh, what, the first thing we need to do is actually generate this base 64 key right here. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, all of this will be available in the uh, blog post linked in the description down below. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll open up uh, our, our SSH command here. Uh, I'm already logged into my server. So we're just gonna run this command um, and it's just going to be a, a, a key generator. So we're gonna do this. <clears throat> um, and right here is the key that we're gonna use. So we're just gonna copy this and then we'll come over to here and we'll paste this in like so. And then uh, all we've gotta do is just click on update the stack. Oops, okay, so I need to recreate that volume. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and just delete all of this. Uh, I've done a lot of testing on this this morning, so that's why I had that little error. You shouldn't have that error message. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on update the stack again. <clears throat> 
Uh, this will take a little while uh, to pull everything and deploy it, uh, but let's, uh, while we're doing this, let's actually go here and take a look at Docker uh, container stats. Uh, this way we can kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, once it's actually pulled everything and starts deploying, uh, this, uh, this terminal window here will change and we'll have two more containers. There's one for the Invoice Ninja database. Um, and there will also be an, an Invoice uh, Ninja app that should pop in here in just a moment as well. Uh, the reason I like to bring this up and take a look uh, is because as long as the CPU here is, is being uh, utilized uh, at a level like this, or that was you know 19 or 57, or like it was more than just a little bit, um, we know that everything, that it's still working in the background. Um, so now we've got our app here. We've got it at, uh, it's operating at like 20-ish percent. So if we actually go into the app, <clears throat> into the logs, we can see here that it's setting permissions. Um, so while it's doing this, we'll just kind of hang out. We can watch this and you can actually see um, this CPU usage uh, go down once all of the permissions have been set. All right, so we've got services.d is done, that's good. And here we can see up uh, in our terminal window here, the CPU usage went to basically zero. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is we'll open this up and we'll just go to port 889. Um, so here is everything we've got going on. Uh, this is gonna be our setup page. So uh, you can set your URL here if you want to, um, unless you're running this through a proxy, uh, I wouldn't require HTTPS. Uh, the debug, you can enable that if you want to. Um, below that, we've got a database connection for MySQL. Again, the host is DB. Uh, we actually declared that um, to, 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 uh, right here in our services. Uh, and then the link, of course, here is DB. So that's what we're going to use as the host. Of course, the database, the username and the password are all in Ninja. By default, of course, you'll want to change those most likely. Here we can test the connection. That was a success, so that's good. Um, so we're gonna, next we're gonna set up email. Uh, this is going, you'll, you'll actually wanna set this up. Uh, you may wanna just set up a dummy email address uh, through Gmail, that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm just gonna say dbtech, like so, oops. And then I've got uh, this email address here, and then that, and then the host uh, for this will be smtp.gmail.com. And uh, 587 TLS, that's all fine for Gmail. So then I'll uh, paste my uh, my password in there and we'll say send test. And as long as everything works, it'll say sent, that's good. So then we can say my first name is David and my last name is Burgess and my email is david at dbtechreviews.com. And I'll put in my really insecure password and I will agree to everything here and we'll click submit. So we'll give this a second to populate the database with the uh, new information there. And uh, here we go. So now we can type in our email address, oops, dbtechreviews.com and my password. And then we'll say log in. And there we go. There is Invoice Ninja up and running in Docker. Um, so here's the thing, right? I, I don't know if this is going to work uh, in its entirety. Uh, I don't know a lot about Invoice Ninja. I don't really have a use for it anymore. Uh, I haven't done any real invoicing outside of like PayPal invoicing in a long, long time. Um, so I think uh, this should work um, fa fairly well. It looks like the guy who uh, did this, uh, this particular setup here uh, has, has done a few updates of it. This most recent one was 19 days ago. Uh, so it looks like it's pretty current as far as that's concerned. Um, of course, uh, the, the database we're using here uh, is just um, uh, a Maria database uh, that should be from Maria database, that one should always stay updated. Um, so basically that should get everything started. And if, it, like I said, if this doesn't uh, work 100%, at least it's a good jumping off point to do some more testing and configurations and things like that uh, to get those other things to work. Um, so hopefully uh, this helps somebody out, hopefully more than one person, but uh, if it only helps one person, I guess we'll still call that a victory. Again, I spent days pouring through Reddit posts and forum posts and all kinds of, of places where people are asking for help, trying to get this up and running. Um, again, I took 
bits and pieces from a couple of different places and, and crammed them all together and got them to work. And I'm to be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever actually put uh, uh, two containers together this way. Um, I've always, uh, always relied on other people's uh, amalgamations of, of Docker containers. So this is the first time I've ever done one of these uh, on my own. Um, honestly, I was kind of stoked. It was kind of neat to see it work. Um, so there you go. Uh, I hope that, like I said, I hope this is helpful, helpful for at least a couple of people. Uh, if it was, if you found the video helpful, uh, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That would really help me out a lot. And let me know that I'm, uh, that I'm helping you guys out. That would be great. Uh, if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can definitely get subscribed. I'm always trying to release more content like this. Uh, so if you're interested in that, there's a subscribe button down below. Um, also, like I said, all of this will be available in the description down below. Uh, there'll be a blog post link down there. Also in that description, there will be a couple of links uh, on ways you can support the channel. One is through coffee. It's like a one-time tip jar. If you want to just kick a couple of bucks, if that's something feasible for you and you want to do that. Uh, coffee, like I said, one-time tip jar, very cool uh, way to handle that. Uh, there's also Patreon. Uh, there are, I think, three different levels at which you can subscribe. Two of those levels will give you access to a patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out, chat about whatever you want to chat about. So I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.